if I have to say, oh, well, you're puking, go home, then uh, d does that apply if you if you break a sweat? Every time you you go take a take a bathroom break, I is that a wrap? You gotta go home? What? It is a slippery slope. What's up, guys? How's how's it going today? Hello. Hey. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Uh, fundamentally, in order to kind of really flesh out our understanding of policy and you know general HR principles, we're taking a, a few complaints from other companies working through the situations with management, particularly our CEO. Fundamentally, we want to talk today about sick days and PTO policy. Everyone good? Yeah. We're going to give everyone, uh, looks like, about one more minute till the hour, and then we'll... Uh... Okay, looks like... Uh... Looks like John, looks like big boss man John's trying to join the call. Do you want to let him in, Tom? Oh, yeah, I didn't realize I was the host. Give me a... Um, and uh, I think that should do it. Oh, all right. Hey, everybody. Uh, let's go. Uh, just so you know, this is going to be your lunch break. Uh, and I got a hard out at 5.30. So uh, let's... Are we still going to get paid? That sounds like uh, a question for Ted over here. Tom. Uh, Tom. But no... Dear employees, we have a long-term employee of 17 years who has been in the hospital in rehab for several months. She has exhausted all her PTO days and her benefits are running out. And you can imagine this has been quite a drain on her family's income. If there is anyone who would like to donate one or more of their PTO, please let the VP of Financial Services know in writing of your intent. Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely, President and CEO. This note was put up in the break room of, we're not gonna say a rival company or a competing company, but another company. How would we like to treat this differently at this company? One thing that I'm wondering is, shouldn't this be the boss's problem? See, this is where I have to jump in. This is where I have to jump in. Because, you know, so many employees end the year, every year with unused benefits. So why not put them to use? They're just sitting there. And I, I try my hardest as a boss to dissuade my employees from taking vacation because here's the thing. When you're taking vacation, what's the competition doing? What are they doing? Stacking paper, exactly. There's all this unused vacation just sitting around and everyone's, you know, a little banker. I don't know. I don't know what, what Terry over here does with it, but Tom. why not save the company a little money? This is what employees never understand is that PTO is actually profit. That's lost, that's a profit, you know, just flying away, right? Every time you go somewhere. I understand that this lady's, you know, sick or whatever, boo-hoo, but um, why is that my problem? The policy uh, allows for people to take um, a specific number of days. A lot of research has shown that inevitably people who don't take the amount of days allotted to them end up suffering, you know, productivity loss. And so the, the days are, you know, both for the individual and for the company uh, in terms of work-life balance, uh, really making for better employees. Here's the thing, Ted, all right? Tom. You're this lady's community, right? I'm I'm the, I'm the up here in the C-suite, you know? It, think of it this way. If the company's a country, right? I'm the president, you're the citizens, right? So I got to be here, you know, I got to call France, right? I, I got to, you know, uh, bomb something. I got stuff to do. You guys are the sick ladies community. So you rally together, help her out, be her family. I, you know, I, I got to run a company. You, does that make sense? This may be, I hate to use such a harsh word as problematic, but potentially problematic for, for a lot of reasons. I think fundamentally, it seems callous for a CEO of a company to be sharing someone's personal information like this. Fundamentally, it is also probably a HIPAA violation. All right. If Elizabeth Warren over here is done babbling, here's something I'd like to propose. If I relent and allow you to institute unlimited PTO, all right, can we never have this conversation again? Is that a deal we can make, Teresa? Tom. Let me give you another example of, of why this is a problem for me. See, I, I am in the process of buying my fourth house right now, right? And that's yes. a luxury property that I was going to list on Airbnb for 125% of market value to drive prices up, right? And stimulate the economy. You see what I'm saying? It all trickles down. When you're cutting into my profit, I just want to caution you that when you're cutting into my profits, you're 
really cutting into your own profits? Uh, research has shown in um, many cases that unlimited PTO actually results in employees using less time off um, through a whole host of factors, including uh, work-induced guilt. That's great for me. I, pre I, I prefer that. So I, I'm not seeing the problem so far, but all right, all right, all right. Let me propose this, all right? Maybe instead of a luxury house, I buy something like a condo, okay? Mm. I'm speaking hypothetically and metaphorically here. I get a condo instead, right? And then that'll open up a little space, you know, for being a little more lenient on your beloved PTO when necessary. All right. John, I would like to submit a formal request to take tomorrow off with my PTO. Here we Me go. Me too. Here we go. Oh, okay. Well, I guess tomorrow's Saturday then, huh? You know what? I'd like to take tomorrow off, but I can't. Why? President. President of the country, right? Um, looks like uh, on your calendar it says uh, tomorrow you are at Pebble Beach with uh, now, Simmons. Oh, oh, you're cutting out, Thaddeus. Oh, oh, I think my internet dropped. Anyway... All right, let's do a story time of when I called out of work and I woke up to my boss standing at the foot of my bed. So I was working at a restaurant. I was living with a roommate in a house. I call up my boss, I talk to him in person. He says, okay, whatever, that's fine. Bye, click. I tell my roommate, I'm really sick. I'm gonna go back to bed and go to sleep. So with me being sick, trying to sleep upstairs, he decided he would go outside, out in the back of my house. I guess he left the door unlocked thinking like, he's right there, he's not going anywhere. My boss pulled in the driveway and he claims he didn't hear anybody pull in. My boss claims that he knocked on the door, nobody answered, so he just felt that the doorknob was unlocked and kind of pushed the door open and came in. He claims he said my name a few times, walked around, didn't see me or hear me, so he went upstairs. That's when I woke up and he's standing at the foot of my bed kind of waving at me like, hey, hey, I know that you called out, but maybe you just don't want to drive and I'll drive you in and then you could still work. At that point, I woke up. I literally thought I was having a fever dream. And when I finally came to him, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, this is not okay. You need to get out of my room. I'm not coming into work. This is crazy. Uh, I, I would advise that um, never to approach a an employee's home in, unless you believe that they're in serious health danger, uh, like in the case of a wellness check or... Okay you know, perhaps something more uh, more serious than potentially missing a day of work for a very legitimate reason. I... But what about the, po the, the the part where the boss is trying to help his employee? I mean, you, you, that's just completely erased because, oh, it's illegal. You know, Boy Scout over here has to do everything by the book. But what about intent, you know? Yeah, I, I believe his heart was somewhat uh in the right place i guess it could have been a miscommunication but um what it could have been todd Tom. is it could have been a criminal coming to steal her tv or something far worse yeah mr boss man john is that really your reaction to somebody basically breaking and entering somebody's home like what if that was well, what well, if that was one of your mansions well well that's completely different i have armed security guards that are you know trained by well we don't need to get into that the point is you know if you don't want people coming into your house, nobody. Okay, I'll say it. Lock your door. I, I, I think this is a, a, an upstanding guy trying to run a business. Now I'm agitated. Uh, I'd like to talk about what Mish did. Right. Fundamentally, if she has what she feels like may be a communicable disease, her uh, staying home and recuperating is, is fundamentally best for the company. And if, probably if she's actually sick, if She's actually sick, Timmy. Tom. And, and see, th this brings me to my next point. And this is something I, I want you to be working on as, as, you know, HR guy. But I think what I've been thinking of doing is hiring a guy, a guard, right? Called a sick day officer. All right. And what he does, it's his job to go to people's houses, verify that they're actually sick. Because, you know, again, how much money am I losing? from people saying they have the flu and you know the flu is oh i just want to sit home and you know play my nintendo or whatever you kids are doing nowadays uh fundamentally it's it's for a chronic issue um chronic and long term and um ongoing issue and we in that case then we might request uh, a note from a physician um or a licensed therapist that 
provide some color as to why an employee may not be able to do their services. I, I don't think uh, us hiring a former member of uh, Bolivian Special Forces, for instance, to look through windows or take Kleenex out of uh, trash um, is um, legal. Here you go with legal again. Uh, Mr. Boss Man John, how much would you be paying this sick day officer? Oh, minimum wage. I mean, you know. That makes sense. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe a little less with like a bonus structure, you know? Well, are they a tipped worker? Maybe you could, if you give them a tip, then it could. Okay, first of all, promoted. <laughs> Write that down. Write that down, Thaddeus. John, how about um, after last year's holiday party, um, you informed us the next morning that you were going to take the day off because you didn't feel your best. And right. I think you texted me that your mouth tasted like an ashtray or something. And I. Um, no, that's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. You remember what that felt like, not feeling well or that you should be at work. Mm -hmm. And so you but probably. When the president, but again, again, when the president's sick, do all the citizens get to take a day off? You, do you, of course you don't. Yeah. Go ahead. Finish your point. Um, well, as an exercise in empathy, I appreciate that you've got a, a valet uh, who sees to your needs, but... Well, at 15 valets, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're not feeling well. Would it be alarming to wake up with one of them standing just over you, unbidden, and perhaps waving at you? Well, no, that I mean, that's their job because see what they do when I'm sick is they come in with, you know, like a turkey baster. Yeah. And there's NyQuil in there. And I just, I open my mouth like a baby bird, you know, yeah. and they just, they just squeeze it in there for me. So I, I don't, I don't really think it applies here. My, uh, you wouldn't love a person that just shows up at your house, irrespective of how they got in um, and into your private sleeping area. We I mean, I don't know. It depends. Is she about 5'10", maybe, uh, you know. 36, 24, 36. I don't know. What are the details? What if it is HR guy Tom at the standing at the foot of your uh, bed? In that case, it is shoot to kill. And it's release the hounds. Now, Mr. Bossman John, could you maybe maybe see how we would feel the same way if you were standing at the foot of our beds to get us to come you to work? Well, think about all the money you could save not paying the sick day officer. Okay, now I'm listening. Go on. The individual time you would save by not going over to their house uh, yourself, knocking however many times and entering and um, skulking uh, around their private residence. Yeah, you, you, and, and legal fees. Legal fees, too. Because, you know, pipsqueaks like you who want to make everything into a crime about your rights. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is when I appreciate pushback, right? Because you're you you you're, you're you're opening a little bit of space in my mind. And here's the other benefit of getting rid of the sick day officers because I love firing people. Ticks a lot of boxes. So I say, I, okay, I, I'm on your side on this. I think I think we stop short of going to employees' houses when they're sick, even though I know they're lying. You know, like when you had two weeks off last week for that appendix surgery it ruptured um okay uh we've heard from a lot from uh myself and a little bit from dane and um the exact right amount from uh our boss john uh hannah uh what do you think I i'd love to hear it sorry um john told me that i shouldn't speak or else i'll get a pay cut so This happened about five years ago in a small town. I do mean that it was a small town. I worked at the grocery store in the deli and I hated it. The owner was a complete monster and we butted heads constantly. Luckily, I worked under the deli manager who wasn't a complete jerk. The owner would deny time off and make you work off vacation time before you took it. So if you wanted to take 20 hours of vacation time, you had to find a way to work those 20 hours before you left or it was unapproved and he could schedule you during that time. On the fateful day that started the drama, the deli manager was out and I was the only person working in that department. 
I was also very, very sick. I'd been out already for two days, and the owner informed me that if I didn't come in, I would be fired. So I dragged myself to work and set about slicing meat and cheese while taking breaks to throw up anything, including bile and water I might have in my stomach, but the owner refused to put me in a different department or let me go home. I'm not sure when it happened since the rest of the story is secondhand and just a blur to me. I was found unconscious on the deli floor by a customer who dialed 911. The owner tried to block the EMTs from reaching the deli while telling them there was no need for them. I was loaded onto the stretcher and put into the back of the ambulance only for the owner to block them in. He wanted me to clock out before being taken to the hospital. Mr. Jerkface owner ended up getting arrested and I got to spend four days in the hospital with neurovirus. His actions led to health inspectors coming in who found a whole bunch of things wrong. He was storing frozen meat on the freezer floor next to cleaning supplies. The store got shut down and later demolished. The employees, myself included, had to sue him to get our final paychecks. He decided that it was our lack of responsibility that led to this and therefore we should pay the massive fines. By the end of the year, the store was torn down, the owner bankrupt and in jail. Now, now, this, Mr. John, it seems like this guy's a failed businessman. What is your uh, what is your take on this? Okay, now see, this is precisely the type of thing that 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 just sets me off. This is a pillar of the community, right? The people who built this country, and he's responsible for providing an entire community with food. Do you have any idea how much pressure there is to that? That I mean, that's that's the kind of constant weight that we business owners are living under. And I think under the circumstances, that's a lot of mental strain. Okay, so maybe he's a little abusive nowadays, but the end, that the ends justify the means. Um, I appreciate that in uh, a lot of instances that management uh, will use different uh, techniques uh, to get the most out of an employee. Uh, you know, both for the sake of the employee and for the sake of the um, general enterprise. I see this a lot probably in the military, particularly the military of um, third world countries. Things like, um, in very specifically, norovirus, which I'm not a doctor, so I, I don't uh, intend to give medical advice here, but traditionally are highly communicable. All right, well, let me stop you right there. Let me stop you right there, because first of all, foodborne illness is a myth. And, and, and the reason I know this is because I barf in every room I go into to show my dominance. It's like a dog marking its territory. I learned that in business school. All right. So what I, I, I what what is the big deal? You know, where's the line? That's my real question. Where's the line? Because if I have to say, oh, well, you're puking, go home. Then uh, d does that apply if you're if you break a sweat? Every time you you go take a take a bathroom break. Is that a wrap? You got to go home? What? This is a slippery slope. This is a slippery, slippery, slippery slope. John, is that why every office in the building, every room in the in the in our corporate building smells like stomach acid? Well, that that's your interpretation. What it really smells like? What what is your name, Don? What Dave, it really smells Dave. like, Don? Power. And I want you to remember that. I want you to write that down. I. Just want to make it uh, abundantly clear that communicable disease is real. That in this case, a potential client find a passed out employee. I would advocate that having someone who may be experiencing drowsiness symptoms operating meat slicers is fundamentally um, counterproductive to uh, the company. Based on what? Uh, um, on the side of a NyQuil, it says, don't operate heavy machine. Maybe, maybe Mr. Boss Man John, if you think of it this way, despite your proclivity to want to throw up often for some reason, um, I don't think that the customer's reactions to um, getting food poisoning every time that they purchase or consume our products would make for many return customers. And that would also hurt profits. 
Hmm. Now, see, this kid's good. This kid's good, Trenton. Tom. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, and, you know, they... I can see on that on that basis, although, you know, I'm still stuck on one thing here. I'm still stuck on one thing here. This guy lost his business. This guy lost his business because uh, what what did she say? She called the EMTs and they, 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 they wouldn't let him in and... and uh, are we just going to go around arresting business owners every time they run afoul of your personal rules? I am, comp I am compelled by the money thing. I don't know. Keep, keep, yeah. Tell me more. He was um, storing food products uh, uh, for consumption by uh, human beings next to uh, cleaning products, which oftentimes, uh, not always, uh, depending on your, you know, uh, depending on who you're purchasing them from, uh, which uh, manufacturer, but oftentimes they contain um, toxic chemicals. Um, so fundamentally, he lost his business um, from the possibility of poisoning current consumers uh, who would in the future. Um, what was he putting the food in the cleaning supplies? I mean, uh, Food and cleaning supplies are in the same building in my house. Does that mean my kids get taken away? No, um, Mr. Boss Man John. Maybe a maybe a moral to take away from this is that he's making no profits now because he is in federal prison. Down that way, Denise. Name. Yeah, well, you know, I have to say once again, I, I guess, I guess, if you're throwing up, I guess if you're throwing up, uh, uh, you know, as like a beta, not in an alpha way, like I do. If you're throwing up, I guess that's I guess I guess that's good enough to say, yeah, you should you should go home and you know till that stops. Uh, I would also like to point out that the scientist who uh, originally published the study on uh, alpha wolves um, shortly after that study was published recanted and um, admitted that wolves often operate best as a pack, not necessarily a democratic way as uh, humans might see it, but. Um, Okay. debunking the theory of uh, alpha behavior in wolves. So basically you're saying that in real life, wolves are communists. Next. I, thanks everyone for joining us. I, I believe we had a very productive meeting with uh, a few very uh, salient takeaways. Uh, uh, John, do you mind um, running us through, sir? Sure. Well, that maybe it's good for business if I treat my employees with a little more empathy and grant them a healthy amount of PTO because a well-rested workforce is a more productive profitable workforce really great start uh, and and I shouldn't invade employees homes to find out if they're not sick even though I really think I should be able to know that information great what a productive meeting. Probably our most productive meeting of this committee so far. I think we all have some really wonderful takeaways, and I very much appreciate your time. If you make me join another of these meetings, I will fire you. <laughs>